Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I get my disposable prints onto my phone. Some of you guys were asking me this on my other film related video, so I thought that I would just put it together in a video and show you guys how I do it. I have a ton of other film related videos on my channel, so if you guys want to check them out, um, there's a whole playlist called, I think it's called All Things Film, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, um, but it starts with my first video, which was the disposable project, where I kind of started this whole thing, where I want to experiment with film and see what I could do with it and see the memories I could capture. Um, but it's turned into this really cool thing where I'm able to take pictures of other people, share them um, with my friends and family, and it's just an all-around cool experience for everybody. So if you haven't got into film, I definitely um, recommend you try it out. Pick up a disposable camera, especially now. Document your quarantine, and by the end of it, once the store is reopened, or if CVS is taking them right now, you can look back on it and be like, oh yeah, I did that during quarantine, and I did that during quarantine, and I did that, whatever. Um, now that I think about it, that would be a super cool idea to get a disposable just for quarantine. I might have to go out and get one for myself. So yeah, some of you guys were asking me how I get my prints onto my phone, and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do that. The first and kind of easiest, basicest way to do this is if you get them processed at like a drugstore like Rite Aid or CVS. Um, I have the little envelope that they gave it to me in with my film photos and they should definitely send them back with a CD of your photos on it. So it's just in this little folder inside the envelope and the CD with all of your pictures scanned onto them. And I have a MacBook Air, so I can't insert this into my computer, but you can always buy just a CD attachment and plug it into the USB um, plug-in on your laptop, and then just burn them right from the CD onto your computer or just copy and paste them. And then what I like to do is I like to upload all my photos onto a Google Drive account, and I'll label them disposable one, disposable two, disposable three, just so I keep track of you know when they were taken, where they were taken, in what order, and uh, make sure that I just keep together the pictures that were all on each camera, if that makes sense, because I like to separate them like that. Um, you can do that however you want. And the reason that I like to upload them to Google Drive is because it's all in their separate folders, and then I could just access it from my phone anywhere by downloading the Drive app, opening it up, and once you open up a picture on the Drive app, you just hold it down and you click save. And it's as easy as that. Also, if you do copy them straight from the CD onto your computer, you can airdrop them to your phone if you have some kind of Apple laptop um, or email them to yourself. If you download them onto your computer, from there, kind of like the options are endless and you could really do whatever you need to do to get them to yourself. Um, airdrop, email, Google Drive, anything like that. The next one, you would definitely have to do this at the place that you're getting them developed and this wouldn't work at like a CVS or a Rite Aid. I know that my local photography shop who develops my photos for me can do this for me. I don't know, you guys would have to check in with your own local um, developing shop. But if I ask them to, they'll Dropbox it to me right then and there or later. But I know that they've given me that option. I've never tried it just because I don't use Dropbox. But if you do use Dropbox, um, I'm sure that they have that option for you if you just ask. Okay, the final option is getting them in yourself. And this is what I personally do just because even though I have a laptop, again, I have a MacBook Air and you can't insert the CD onto there. So I scan them in myself. You can buy just a photo scanner, document scanner um, off of Amazon, Staples, office supply store, anywhere like that. Um, but they are pretty expensive and I bet that if you guys have a printer at home, then probably the majority of you guys have a scanner option that comes with your printer. Um, and that's what I have. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting just a separate scanner because you probably already have this function on your printer. And also the scanners are kind of expensive if you're just gonna be using them to scan in your um, disposable photos. So if you already have a scanner built into your printer, that's what I use and that's what I'll be showing you guys how to do right now. Okay, so right here I have my printer. It's on the ground right now because I'm in the middle of moving, but I'll be using the HP OfficeJet Pro 6978 printer. Um, this is just the one that I have, but again, 
any kind of up-to-date printer has the scanning function um, already in it. So I would definitely just recommend checking out your own camera and not your own camera, your own printer. And I didn't know how to use it, but if you don't have any HP um, kind of office jet printers, I definitely just Google it. That's what I did when I first learned how to use it. Um, but it, you could probably watch this video and figure out how to do it on your own. So I have my printer right there. Um, next on my computer, you have to download the HP Smart app. So I have the HP Smart app um, up on my computer and my printer right there. Um, it'll wait for you to connect your printer um, to the internet and um, yeah, so you can either scan, print, print photos, whatever, all from this app. I'm just going to click the scan button, this orange one right here, and you're going to change these settings. Your, or I think I already have them in, but you're going to change it to photo instead of document, um, color, if you want them, if you want to scan them in black and white, go ahead, but I do it in color. Um, sometimes this is a little weird. I'll usually do four by six, but once the app gets a little glitchy and if it cuts out like the picture or scans in the full document because it can't kind of sense the four by six, I'll just put in five by seven. Um, but I definitely try the four by six and if it's scanning the whole scanner glass area, then I would just, um, switch to the five by seven. So I usually do the five by seven and you can either do it through the document feeder or the scanner glass. Um, I like the scanner glass better because it just works better and the image comes out way clear and it can kind of just scan like around the edges and see exactly where the 4x6 kind of fits. So I'll do the scanner glass. Um, I do just the 300, the setting that it was already at, it was the default setting and I tried to switch it to 1200 one time, but it was literally taking like 30 minutes to scan in one photo, but this does it in like literally seconds. And then this was also the default option, so I just kind of leave it on medium. Um, but then I go to my printer, I'll lift up the- oh wait, I already left the picture in there. Okay, I guess I'll leave this one. Um, Look at that picture. Um, so I just put this in by the corner with the white little arrow and then you are going to just close it, make sure it's aligned. It'll usually stay there. And then you're just going to click this blue little scan button at the bottom. And I don't know if you can hear it, but we'll see the light, but it's currently scanning it right now. And then that's it. It's literally scanned straight into your computer. What I usually like to do is, I'll just pretend like I'm scanning one again. So I'll go up here and click add pages. You can, because you can save this right now, but you can literally just add it all and it'll save them as individual files. It won't do it as one whole thing. So I'll just click add. Let me just scan that picture one more time. and literally in seconds it's scanned. So you can see here that the two of them are there and you just wanna make sure that you file it as a JPG. I filed it as um, a PDF one time and you just, it's hard to upload it onto Google Drive if you wanna do that um, because this will do the individual, like upload them as individual files and the PDF will be one. Um, and then I'll just go and save them onto my computer from here, name them whatever disposable camera this was from. Um, but yeah, that's how you scan them in using your printer. And that's it. That's basically how I get my prints onto my phone after I get them developed. Those are the three main ways that I know of. Again, it's just burning them from the CD, getting them Dropbox to you from a local photography shop, or scanning them in yourself using a little scanning device or your printer. I use a scanning option. Again, it works all the time for me. That's what I do. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing more film related videos in the future. I kind of gave myself a good idea there and I want to go out and get a film camera and kind of just document the rest of quarantine. It's really interesting seeing people's kind of like photography online during quarantine because people are getting super creative and I want to see what I can do with a disposable camera during this time and I might make a whole video out of it because I'm kind of interested in, you know, what myself would do. I do have a film camera that only has like 
or that has left 17 photos on it the rest of the things that are on that are my AP art stuff and I, to be honest I have no idea what is on it so I might just finish off that camera by kind of shooting people's quarantines so yeah if you guys want to see that make sure to subscribe and like this video so I know that you guys want to see that and I'll definitely come out with that in the future but if you guys want to see some more film videos I have two of them right here and I have a whole playlist called All Things Film where I have the first video is the disposal project, three other videos are sharing my film photos, and I think I have a video that's up about how to use film cameras. If you guys like those videos, check them out. I'll definitely post more in the future, and yeah, bye guys.